Good morning. Right now I'm in Pickneyville and I'm going to meet up with a viewer just like you named Jeff. And I'm going to be picking up a really interesting Land Rover from him. I had to drive about eight hours from home to get here. I have about an hour more to drive. Let's get on the road. Well, there it is. Back up here and see if Jeff is around. This is the XD model because it is an automatic transmission. Doesn't have the roof rack up here. That's the easy way to tell this from the other two versions. So cute! <laughs> Did you bring those wheels and tires back inside the truck? Three of them inside, two, or, uh, yeah, two of them inside and two of them on the roof rack. Well, this is Jeff and his wife, Sharon. Thanks for telling me about this truck. Oh, my pleasure. You don't know how happy it makes me that you're interested in it. So how long have you had this? We bought it in 2008. Okay. And you've off-roaded it, driven it a bunch? Driven it a whole lot. It was, uh, since we're both into rear-wheel drive sports cars, it was our only car during the winters. Yeah. So you drove it from South Carolina? North Carolina, yeah, from, from Wilmington, North Carolina, to here in the pouring, driving rain. And it has been just, it had been just amazing until we had to get the, uh, the heads done. Okay. And uh, you've taken us to Rover events and... Yep, St. Louis Rover Club. Uh, been Jeep and with the Jeep guys, we took this out. Needless to say, that didn't go well. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Is that because they were getting stuck and you weren't? <laughs> you know, ostensibly they said, that's not a Jeep, but I think oh. it was possibly I wasn't getting stuck. Yeah. But the, what the St. Louis Rover Club think of it? Well, the Rover Club, in St. Louis is predominantly a, a discovery, or a, uh, I'm Defender. sorry, a Defender Club. And so it got little enough attention. However, the one thing they did make clear is nobody had ever seen an XD before. Okay. And they're pretty rare. Yeah. It's got dual batteries. Yeah, it has dual battery set up on it. Is there a switch somewhere? Yeah, yeah. inside. Oh, okay. And it's the battery isolator kit. Okay. Information. This will be a fun uh, cleanup video on this one. <laughs> oh no. You love cleanup videos, don't you? I might have to clean it up. <laughs> I've seen you cleaning <laughs> wheels. <laughs> I love chrome. I love cleaning chrome. Oh. Look at that! I think this car likes you. <laughs> Nothing can make me happier. I, I want you to know. Somebody offered me twenty five hundred, or me give it to you free. I'd still give it to you free. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of people that treat these with much respect. I think it's cool. You get to watch it. I think yeah, it's the coolest. I, in cool. fact, I think that's the first thing I told her. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going to give it away. And here's the, here's the good news. I get to watch it just like oh, if I was doing it too. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, when they get rid of their car to someone, they'll be like, well, hey, will you at least send me pictures of it when it's done or something like that? But you get to actually yeah, see I in real the time the, the actual process.
I've got the Discovery back in the garage, and you might be asking yourself, what's so special about a yellow Land Rover Discovery? There's no Camel Trophy stickers on this thing. Well, in 1996, the Camel Trophy was using yellow Discoveries. However, those were TDIs, and those were not available to be sold in North America. So a group of Land Rover dealers in the Southeast United States put in a special order of AA yellow painted Land Rover Discoveries, of which 10 of these were built and they were outfitted similarly to the Camel Trophy trucks. They then competed these 10 trucks against themselves on a televised event on ESPN2. Take a breath, take a deep breath, one, two, Welcome to a unique competition developed by Land Rover to test teams from its dealerships on their product knowledge as well as the physical and mental capacity needed to live an active outdoor lifestyle. This is Land Rover Trek 96. Many automotive and Land Rover enthusiasts saw this broadcast and a lot of Americans wanted to get a hold of a truck just like this. Also in 1996, the Eco Challenge was held and 28 yellow Land Rover Discoveries were ordered for the event. And these vehicles were used as the support trucks for the teams who were doing the kayaking and hiking and other things that that event entailed. You know the rules. Co-ed Team League 5 raced flat out for more than a week. If any one racer drops out, the whole team is disqualified. And then finally, in 1997, 250 of these Land Rover Discovery XDs were produced. These were a bit more polished and had more options than the previous vehicles. One of the easiest ways to tell a Land Rover XD from the previous models is that on the Trek and Eco Challenge trucks from 1996, they retained the original roof bars and the luggage rack was installed over the top of them. The second way to tell if this is a real Land Rover XD is under the bonnet. Under the bonnet, we will find a tag with a serial number from the Land Rover Special Vehicles Operations. They were the ones that specially made this vehicle, and this was the only special edition of the Land Rover to Discovery for the US market. When I picked up this vehicle, I put a jump pack on it so that I could supply power to get the shifter into neutral. I haven't tried to start it at all, so let's put a battery on this and see if it runs. Under the bonnet, it's pretty dusty. You see already over here, this is the location for the second battery. Normally a Land Rover would have the rest of its airbox components here. Looks like this battery is not connected at all. When I put power to the other battery, I need to be mindful to have these cables away from anything so that they aren't shorting out on anything. Coming over, here is the location of the special vehicles tag. This is the condition of the current battery. I'm going to put a battery charger on this and then let's open up the air cleaner to make sure we're not sucking a mouse nest into the engine. I'm always wary opening one of these up. Usually there is almost always a mouse nest in here. And on this one, there's no protection from the mice going in here. At least the mice have not gotten through the filter. So even if they're in there, they did not get into the engine through the intake. There's just a bunch of leaves in there. There's actually no mouse nest this time. I have a battery charger and a jump pack hooked up. Let's go turn the key and see what happens. First thing I'd like to do is see if the windows work. It does. Now I can actually breathe in here. Well, let's turn the key and see what happens. When I turn the key on, I don't hear anything from the fuel pump. I'm going to guess the fuel pump is probably not working because it has sat for so long. But that is going to be an issue for next time. Next time you see this truck, we'll make a really good effort on trying to get it running and back on the road again. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.